this is why you feel stuck. This is why you feel like you can't change. Like you don't want to do anything different. Even if what you're doing is bad, your ego is trying to protect you saying, listen, you need to stay here. It's comfortable here. It's predictable here. We know what's going to happen here. This is the best place for you right here. The only way that you can change is to step away from your ego, to get out of that type of thinking and to move into a higher vibration. You have to be open to change. If you wanna change, you have to be willing to change. You have to be open to change. Hi there, this is Sarah Kuhn. If you are an INFJ or in a relationship with an INFJ or related to an INFJ in any way and you want to figure out how they operate, what makes them tick, and how to communicate with them better, this is the show for you. It's called The Quiet Ones. This is a show that deconstructs INFJs, what they are, how they think, how they feel, how they operate, and how they relate to people with other personality types. Whether you have just found out that you're an INFJ or have known for a number of years, there is something for everyone. You will learn more about your personality type so that you understand who you are and understand how you operate in the workplace, in relationships, in your family, and with friends. I want you to walk away from every episode feeling like you have a place of belonging, feeling like you are no longer alone, feeling like you have a place to be heard and seen and understood as you really are. This is a place to connect with other INFJs, to learn and grow and really thrive. I want to give you inspiration and real life strategies that are going to help you figure out how to live your best life every single day. Though INFJs are very rare, you are not alone in this world. You are not the only one who thinks the way that you do and feels the way that you do. Hear from real INFJs just like you. Hi there, I'm Sarah Kuhn. Welcome to another episode of The Quiet Ones. So I have something really cool to tell you. I'm here to help you. I want to inspire you to be the best version of yourself, the best version that you can actually even imagine. We know that we're INFJs, right? But that's just the first step in this long healing journey, a step into the better version of yourself. There's so much more that we can talk about and learn about and explore. That's why I've put together a week-long free workshop that's called Here for This. These are the steps that you need to take to understand your patterns, heal from your past, and create your best self yet. I'll be doing live videos every single day from Monday through Friday, September 27th to October 1st at 12 p.m. Eastern time, which is also 9 a.m. Pacific time. You can go to infjwoman.com slash here for this to get access to this week-long free workshop right now. There's so much that you don't learn in school and that you don't even learn in college that's crucial to living your best life. There's a reason that you feel stuck and disconnected right now. There's a reason that you don't know what to do next and you don't know what helps. I've been there and I know what that feels like and I want to help you out of it. We can get to the bottom of this together. Go to infjwoman.com slash here for this to sign up right now. So the episode that we have today is called Don't Believe Everything That You Think. We're going to talk about the thoughts that you think and why you shouldn't always believe them. You are what you think. I'm sure that you've heard this before. I'm sure your mom or your dad probably told this to you, probably your school teachers, I'm sure there's been other people as well. It's kind of a common thing that a lot of people hear. My mom definitely told me this so many times, but it's actually true. And it's a lot truer than what we actually think that it is. So we're gonna talk about it today. There is a quote from a guy named Dr. Joe Dispenza. There's a couple of them that I'm gonna to read to you today. He wrote this book that's called Breaking the Habit of Being You that I bought, and it has completely changed the way that I think about a lot of things. So I want to explain it to you. He says, your thoughts have consequences so great that they create your reality. He means this in the actual sense of your thoughts absolutely create your reality. We're going to break that down quite a bit in this podcast. But I want to start with talking about 
how we actually start thinking the thoughts that we have. A lot of the thoughts that we have come from learned behavior. And a lot of that is set before we get to the age of seven or eight years old. It's things that we learn from our parents, things that we learn from um, our teachers at that time in our lives, things that get repeated to us over and over and over again, and they become ingrained in us and we just end up believing them. These thoughts become an automatic habit that just runs in our head and we rarely question them. So another quote from Dr. Joe Dispenza, he says, remember that 95% of who we are by age 35 sits in the same subconscious memory in which the body automatically runs a program set of behaviors and emotional reactions. In other words, your body is running the show. The majority of the day, 95% of the time, your mind is not consciously telling you what to do. It's a subconscious activity. You think about when you get up in the morning, you probably have a morning routine to get ready for work. You brush your teeth the same way and you've done it for so many years, especially if you're like me, I'm 35 years old, I've been brushing my teeth for pretty much that whole amount of time. I know how to brush my teeth. I don't have to think about it. I know how to fix my hair in the morning. I don't have to think about it. I even know how to drive to Starbucks to get my coffee in the morning. I usually go to the same Starbucks. I take the same road. In fact, the Starbucks that I go to is... I think it's like three miles from my house and it requires me to turn twice. The whole rest of the time, I really don't even have to think about driving. And that early in the morning, there really isn't a lot of traffic. Sometimes I drive down the road and I'm sure you've probably done this too on your way to work or to get coffee. Um, you're driving down the road and you get there and you're like, how did I get here? I was totally thinking about something else. I completely spaced out, but my body knows how to drive because I've been doing it for so long and I know the way to this place. So I don't even have to think about it. It just happens. There's a lot of activities in our life that are like this. And it's not just things like driving and brushing your teeth. There are a lot of thoughts that we think over and over again. We have a programmed response to things that come up. Maybe you've wanted to make a change in your life and you've realized that there's a lot of resistance, that you keep going back to the same behaviors that you've had in the past. And even though you wanna make that change, even though you think about it every day and you're trying really hard, you still keep getting pushed back to the same behaviors that you've always had. So let's talk about that a little bit. I'm gonna tell you a story about my personal life. Um, the last couple of years, I have gotten into the habit of watching the news. I never did that before. I hated the news, I hated politics. I hated anything that had to do with that kind of stuff. And that really started from my childhood too. When I was young, uh, my grandpa, who was my dad's dad, he wasn't a very nice person. Um, he was an alcoholic and he was very angry. And every time we went to talk to him, he would talk about politics. And it didn't matter what you were talking about, what story you were telling him, he would scream and yell and throw huge fits about politics. And whatever you were talking about, he would turn it into a conversation about politics. And I thought, he's just a really angry guy. Like how sad for him that he has to live his life like that. And then as time progressed, a couple new presidents get elected, and all of a sudden, my dad starts screaming and yelling about politics, and he turns into this angry person who is turning every conversation into this horrifying argument about politics, and I was like, oh no, 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 what if this is like something that runs in our genes or something? What if I'm going to turn into this angry person who screams and yells about politics? 
that would be horrible. So then 2020 happened and I started watching the news and then we get into election season, right? We're in the United States, we elected a new president in 2020. And so there was a lot of information in the news about politics. There was a lot more focus on politics. And because I was watching the news, I was all of a sudden interested in politics when I had never been interested before. And all of a sudden, I became the angry person who was screaming and yelling about politics all the time. And every conversation that I had with my friends or my family would turn into, I would turn it into something about politics. And I was screaming and yelling at them and being this really angry person. And I remember having a conversation with my mom where I told her, I know what's happening. I know I'm an angry person who's screaming and yelling about politics all the time, but I feel like I can't control it. Like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make it stop. I know it's annoying. I know it's horrifying. It's horrifying me too, but I don't know how to make it stop. So at that point, I started paying more and more attention to what was going on with me personally. I was starting every single day reading a couple of different news websites, comparing and contrasting the information, um, being horrified by how different websites present different stories and wondering about, about the differences between them. I was checking the websites again around lunchtime. And then as soon as I got off of work, I would turn the news on on TV the cable news channels, not just like regular news. And every time that I would read the news, every time I would watch people talk about it, I felt fear and I felt anxiety building in me. Now, I already have an anxiety disorder. I already go to worst case scenario in my head. That's a normal reaction for me. So, when I'm consuming something on a daily basis that makes that worse, it becomes unbearable for me. I felt helpless because I'm reading about all these horrifying things and I can't control any of it. I, there's nothing that I can do. And then I got angry because it's horrifying and I can't fix it. There's nothing I can do. So then I started looking at how it's affecting me. Well, I'm constantly angry about everything all the time. I was yelling at my family and friends about things that I couldn't control, about everything, really. I lost some of my friends because we didn't agree on politics and I wasn't interested in hearing anybody else's opinion. And one of the biggest things was when I went to bed at night, I would lay there with my eyes wide open with all of these stories of fear and anxiety just running through my head. And I felt like I was paralyzed. Like I couldn't relax at all, not even enough to go to sleep. Sleep is a huge thing for me. When you have depression and anxiety, sleep is like the only escape, but it's also the thing that makes everything better. And it doesn't matter whether you have any mental health disorders at all, sleep is something that you need. It's this restorative process that helps you heal and helps you feel good. Um, it can do so many wonders for you. But when you can't sleep, you wake up the next day tired. And then it's a whole lot easier to get angry. And it's a whole lot easier to have anxiety. And when you do that on a continual process for months on end, you end up looking like a zombie. It's really pretty horrifying to me when I look at some of the pictures of myself and some of the videos that, because <laughs> I do videos all the time. And I look at some of them and I'm like, oh, wow, I look really sick or really old or just incredibly tired. Like, how did I start looking like that? That's really bad. But a lot of it comes from just being tired, being stressed out. 
So once I started analyzing all these things, I was like, okay, I have to make a change. I can't keep doing this. This isn't fixing anything. It's not helping anything. It's just making me feel terrible. So I need to quit watching the news. And for any of you who watch the news or have watched it, it's addicting. They know what to do to make it addicting. They make money by you watching commercials. And if you're not sitting there watching their program with the commercials playing, they're not making money. So they know how to make it addictive and they have a lot of money and they spend a lot of money researching how to make it addictive, which is why it is the way that it is. There's this quote about the news from Glennon Doyle. I found it recently on Facebook and I think it's just so perfect. People ask me all the time why I don't watch the news. Here's why. The news is not really a reflection of what happened today. It is a reflection of the craziest, most provocative things that happened today. It definitely is. I agree with that a thousand percent. So I decided I had to quit watching the news and because it's addictive, it's a process. It isn't, or at least it wasn't for me, just like one day, okay, I'm watching the news feeling terrible. And the next day, I'm just not going to watch the news because I was consuming so much of it. It's like, okay, I can turn the TV off. I can find something else to watch. That's great. I found some new programs to watch. That helps. I have a whole stack of books that I want to read. And I'm making progress on reading those. So that can take up some more of my time as well. But I started every single day by reading the news. And I was doing it at lunchtime too. So I know from experience that instead of just stopping doing something, that I need to find something else to replace it with that's a whole lot easier for me. I've heard so many people talking about meditation recently that I thought, okay, I'm gonna give this a try. I recently did Gabby Bernstein's bestseller masterclass course, which is a fantastic course. If you're interested in writing a book, you should definitely check it out. And in that course, she had a couple of meditations that are really, really good. And so I noticed in August that she was doing um, a meditation challenge. So I thought, oh, okay, that would give me like 21 meditations that I could do. That would be really good too. So I did that. And within a week, I started noticing a change. I started, I started noticing that I had tools that would help me through some of the most stressful things. Not only had I replaced watching the news, which was something that brought me a lot of fear and anxiety, I replaced that with meditating, which brought me peace and calmness and gratitude, all of these higher energy emotions, which we're going to talk about too. But I also noticed another thing that's incredibly stressful for me is driving because I live just outside of Boston and there's tons of traffic and people are so rude. And so I would notice myself getting angry before I even got in the car. I would get angry just thinking about going somewhere because I knew that driving was going to be a pain and people are so rude and they pull out in front of you and then they go slow. And it's like, why do you have to do that? Like, how can you be so incon like inconsiderate? And so that it would just make me angry, right? But after I started meditating, I was driving down the road one day and feeling all of this anger bubbling up inside of me. And I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna go there. So what else can I do? One of the meditations that I've been doing is about being grateful and listing things that you're grateful for, even if it's just something really simple. So I started listing things that I was grateful for. And in the beginning, it was like, Okay, what am I grateful for? Um, I'm grateful that I have a nice car that I like. I'm grateful that I have air conditioning. I'm grateful that it's a nice day and it's not 100 degrees anymore. You know, and it kind of felt like grasping at first and I wasn't really like sold on it, but I'm like, okay, this is better than being angry and yelling and screaming, right? And the more that I did it, the easier it got. And I noticed that my energy started to lift and I started to feel better. I started to feel happier. And I wasn't so concerned that the person in front of me wasn't going as fast as I wanted to go. It was like, eh, it's okay, we'll get there. Not a big deal. 
So let's talk about energy for a moment. A lot of people talk about energy and it wasn't until recently that I really understood all the elements of it and all the connections of it. So just in case you don't understand it, I wanna sit for a minute and, and talk about it and explain it in hopefully a way that you can understand. Your body is made up of energy. And every time I heard this, I was like, Meh, I don't know. Like, what are you talking about? Are you talking about like caffeine? Are you talking about like happy peppy people that are just like, I call it toxically happy because they're just like happy all the time. And like, I think about if you ever watched the TV show, Desperate Housewives, I loved that TV show. Um, I think about Brie from Desperate Housewives. I loved her and I related to her so much. And I think part of that was because she couldn't express any negative emotions. She was the happy, perfect housewife for most of the show. And that's why her marriage, her first marriage to Rex failed because he was just like, how can you be so perfect all the time? And she even like, after he yelled at her, she even went into the bathroom and cried but then she fixed her face and she went back out to talk to him and she was perfect. Now I'm not saying that's a model of what you should do, but that was, <laughs> that was the kind of energy that I was thinking about, you know, like when you think about energy, is it like toxic happiness? Are you talking about like, you know, caffeine? Like what kind of energy are we talking about? That's not it at all. So let's just set that idea down right now. Um, I wanna talk about, chemistry. If you think back to chemistry, if you took high school chemistry, I took chemistry in college. Um, we learned a little bit about how certain chemicals react when they're combined, right? And we learned about the basic properties of certain chemicals. Um, I remember drawing all of the little molecule charts and talking about how atoms combine with other atoms when they're combined then, you know, sometimes they share, I forget what it is that they share, but you know, when you talk about protons and electrons and neutrons, some of them share different things, right? But we generally understand that the molecules, they're vibrating at a certain energy. They combine in different ways. Some of them are super organized. Some of them are very disorganized. And that's why they have different reactions when they're combined. I also studied engineering for a while when I was in college. And one of the classes, well, there was a few classes that I had to take that were about materials and the properties of different materials. So when you're an engineer, especially if you're going to be a structural engineer, it's important that you use the right materials when you're making things. Some materials hold up well under pressure and some materials break under pressure, some of them squish under pressure. You don't want that to happen if you're building a bridge, right? You don't want it to fail. And failure when you're building a bridge is a massive problem. I'm sure that we've all seen bridges that have collapsed. There have been some on the news in the last five or six years that are kind of spectacular when they crash. Um, for those of you in the United States, if you were alive during 9-11 in 2001, you know what it looks like when buildings fall down. It's not something that you want. Um, so you need to understand if you're going to be an engineer and you're designing those types of things, you need to understand what happens with materials. You need to understand how much pressure that they can hold, that they can withstand, how much force that they can withstand. And so a lot of that is okay, What's the strength of the material? What's it made of? How does it react under heat? How does it react under stress? Um, and some, some materials get stronger with heat and stronger with stress, and some of them get weaker in those situations. But a lot of it has to do with the basic components of the materials all the way down to the cellular level, the, the molecule level, they vibrate in different ways and they combine in different ways. So it's important to understand how all of that works. Now, it's easy for me to think about materials and chemicals being energy 
right? That makes sense. Even when you're talking about things that are really, really strong, like steel, if you look at it under a microscope, under a strong enough microscope, you're going to be able to see the cells and the molecules. It's really, really difficult for me and not something that I had ever done before until the last couple of years to think about the fact that your body is made up the same way. You're made up of cells and in those cells are molecules and those molecules are atoms and in those atoms are subatomic particles, which are actually energy. They are particles that are vibrating at a certain energy. And just like how materials and chemicals change in certain circumstances, your body changes in certain circumstances. The vibration of the energy changes in different circumstances. So when people talk about vibes, that's what they're talking about. That they're talking about what sort of energy that you have. And a lot of that is based off of emotions. So your emotions can change the frequency at which the energy vibrates. Obviously, you want to be at a higher energy, right? Higher means good, lower means bad. So let's talk about what kind of emotions change your energy. On the bottom of the scale, you have things like shame, guilt, apathy, fear, anxiety, all of those things are really low frequency energies, things that will bring your vibrations down. We call them low energy emotions. That also includes things like anger, desire, and pride. When you start getting into the neutral range, you're talking about things like courage. Above neutrality is willingness. That's the openness. So if you want to change your energy from guilt or fear, you have to be open to change. You don't really go from guilt and fear all the way up to the top, which is like peace and happiness. You kind of have to start at the middle. You have to start at being just open to change, right? So willingness is just above neutrality. And then you come up to things like acceptance and then reason, love, joy, and peace. All of those things are high frequency emotions. So let's talk for a second about what happens when you get stuck in the lower energy. That's where you get stuck in your ego. Now your ego is anything that starts with I, any statement that starts with I. Things like, I'm smart, I'm good, I'm lazy, I'm beautiful, I'm ugly. All of those are statements from your ego. And your ego is really like your sense of self. It's your personal identity and your self-worth. Your ego is also a really, really good storyteller. It creates these narratives, these stories that you tell yourself over and over again. And your ego wants to maintain those stories and those narratives, those things that we believe about yourself. Your ego wants to maintain them at all costs. Your ego also operates under this assumption that anything that happens to you is your fault. It happens to you because of you. So when you want to change, like me watching the news, I was like, oh, I'm in this really bad spot. I want to change to something better. Your ego is like, no, hold on. Like, you're really good at feeling bad. You felt bad for a long time and this is just something that makes you feel even worse. So why would you wanna change that? Let's just stay where we've always been. That's, that's like your set point of happiness. And you don't wanna do anything that's different than that. You just need to stay here. You need to stay wh with what you're used to. You need to stay where you're comfortable. Even if where you're comfortable isn't a good place, that's where you, that's the best place because you're comfortable there. Anytime that you try to make a change, your ego 
wants to protect you from things that have happened to you in the past. And so your ego puts up all these barriers, even if it's an opportunity for positive change, because in the opportunity for change, there's a chance of failure. There's a chance of pain. There's a chance of hurt. And your ego is like, no, no, nope. We've done that before. We tried that before. And you remember how that happened? It was bad. You don't want to go back there. What you need to do is put up a wall and stay where you're comfortable. That's what's best for you. This is why you feel stuck. This is why you feel like you can't change. Like you don't want to do anything different. Even if what you're doing is bad, your ego is trying to protect you saying, listen, you need to stay here. It's comfortable here. It's predictable here. We know what's going to happen here. This is the best place for you right here. The only way that you can change is to step away from your ego, to get out of that type of thinking and to move into a higher vibration. Remember how we talked about with the energy, the neutral energy, the, the way where you change from negative to positive, right above neutral energy is willingness. You have to be open to change. If you want to change, you have to be willing to change. You have to be open to change. You don't go from being angry and scared all the time to feeling incredible joy all the time. It doesn't happen. You don't go from having this scarcity mindset to having a mindset of abundance just like that. It doesn't happen. You have to be willing. You have to be open. Being open you have to be open to witnessing your ego. This is a big part of it because if you don't understand the stories that your ego is telling you, then you can't change those stories. You can't step away from those stories. So the first thing that you have to do is be willing to witness your ego. Witness those thoughts in the moment. Feel that resistance to change when it comes up. And then witness the effects of that resistance. Witness your behaviors in the middle of that resistance. Witness yourself going back to doing the same thing that you've always, always done. And then witness the thoughts that come up that are like, no, oh, I can't, I wanna change, I wanna do something else. And in that moment, instead of being angry and frustrated and annoyed with yourself, be open to trying something new. Instead of saying, I'm going to stop watching the news, going back to my story, instead of saying that, say to yourself, what if? What if I stopped watching the news? How would my life be different then? What if I chose something else? and sit with that for a while. Remember that we started with the statement, you are what you think. And Dr. Joe Dispenza told us that your thoughts have consequences so great that they create your reality. When you look at it from the perspective of ego and energy, it really is true that what you think changes who you are. If you live in this space of all of these negative emotions, your, your cells, your molecules, they vibrate differently. Remember we talked about that, how they vibrate differently? It can literally change who you are as a person. We talked about how chemicals change when they are combined and how materials act differently. They act differently under stress and under pressure than they do when they're just left to themselves. Well, your body reacts differently under stress and under pressure too. And when you live in those negative emotions, not only do you feel things like your muscles contracting, 
if you have anxiety or if you've ever felt that, you know what I'm talking about. You know what it feels like to clench your fists and to do it like almost unconsciously. You know what it feels like to feel really rigid and really tight. You know what it feels like the soreness of your muscles because you spend so much time in that space. It's not just your muscles. It's not just your hands that are doing that. It's down to your cells and your molecules and the atoms that are doing that as well. They react differently. And there are different causes and effects on that. It's not just what you believe. It can have an effect on the very makeup of your body. But then if you live in those higher emotions, when you talk about love and joy and peace, then your cells are going to react differently to that. They're not under stress. They're not under pressure. They have the opportunity to do what they should be doing. It's, it's a healing type of feeling. You're giving them the opportunity to do what they're supposed to be doing rather than to live under that pressure. So when you live in fear, and scarcity and anger all of the time, your body reacts to that. Not only does your mind react to that, because remember we talked about how 95% of the thoughts that you think are repeated, they are subconscious. It's just what you've always done. And so you're going to continue to do it. But your body, the very cells and molecules of your body remembers that, and it's just gonna keep repeating it. So if you live with fear and anger and anxiety all the time, then that's what manifests in your life. Just like when you buy a red car, you start seeing red cars everywhere. I, um, <clears throat> I've been wanting to buy a Tesla. And so I see Teslas everywhere. When I was downtown, when I went to the Fenway concert a um, little over a month ago now, I walked past a Tesla dealer and I was like, oh, cool. And then I start seeing Teslas on the road everywhere. And I'm like, is it like everybody in Boston drives a Tesla? <laughs> but I thought the same thing when I bought my car, which is a red Toyota. I started seeing red Toyotas everywhere. And then when my mom bought her new car, which is a, um, it's a Subaru. I think it's a Subaru Outback. I started seeing them everywhere too. When you think about things, then they start manifesting in your life, right? But when you think about higher energy feelings, things like happiness and abundance and love and peace, those things manifest in your life as well. So the more that you practice the higher vibrational emotions, the easier it will be for you to practice them. The more natural it will be. Because believe me, when you're used to feeling fear and anxiety and helplessness, and just feeling icky, that's what you want to feel like. Even though you're sitting there going, no, I don't wanna be anxious. I don't wanna be, be angry. I don't wanna be scared. I don't wanna live in fear. You're used to that. So your ego and your body, all of it is working against you, pulling you back to that feeling. And I'm sure that your, answer, your question is, how do I change that? Like, well, how do I change that? We talked about that too. So let's go over it one more time. The way that you change it is you go back to the neutrality energy, which is willingness. It's being open to change. Instead of saying, okay, I'm used to feeling fear and anger. I'm just going to be happy today. Your body and your brain especially is going, <laughs> no, you're not. You're not going to be happy. You don't even like being happy. That feels weird. You're not used to being happy. You're not a happy person. What a joke, that's not gonna work. But instead of saying, I'm gonna be happy today, if you say, what if I could be happy today? Then your brain doesn't have any of this feedback, this negative, sarcastic feedback. It's like, um, 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 I don't know, what if? What, what happens if you're happy today? That would be weird, you know? <laughs> that's what my brain came up with. Like, Oh, 
what what would happen? I don't know. I don't know what it feels like to be happy every single day. That's kind of weird. And it does feel weird in the beginning. But then you get used to feeling happy. And then when you feel angry and frustrated and fearful, then that starts to feel weird. And you're like, oh, no, wait. We need to move into the higher vibrational energy. What can we do? What if? Let's be open to that. Let's be open to feeling happiness. Let's be open to feeling joy. Let's be open to looking for things that cause joy, that make us feel joy. Let's do that this week. That's my challenge for you this week. Be willing, be open. I wanna help you feel the best that you have ever felt. I wanna help you be holy and unapologetically you. I wanna help you talk more about energy, help you change the energy that you have. I wanna help you with this healing journey that you're on. You started looking for your personality for a reason. There's something in your life that you wanna change. Maybe it's just that you feel like you're not you. You feel like you're living somebody else's life and you don't know how to really be you. I've been there, I know what that feels like, and I also know what it feels like to step out of that and really step into your own, to be the person that you've been dreaming about being for a long time. So I've created this free week-long workshop. It's called Here For This. These are the steps that you need to take to understand all of your patterns, to heal from all of the things that have happened to you in the past, and to create your best self. I'll be doing live videos every single day, Monday through Friday from September 27th to October 1st at noon Eastern time, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Go to infjwoman.com slash here for this to get access to this free week-long workshop right now. There's a link for it in the show notes. I really hope to see you there. It's going to be an amazing time. There's going to be other people there, other INFJs there, just like you, who are on this healing journey as well, and who are ready to make friends. They want to share their experience with other people, to connect with people who are doing the same thing, who feel the same way as they do. So I hope that you will come and join us. Again, go to infjwoman.com slash here for this. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate you so very much. I will see you again next week. So you just watched that video and I'm sure you enjoyed it. If you want some more amazing information about INFJs, check out these videos right now. I'll see you there.